Hello creative friends, I hope you're well. So in this video, I thought I would illustrate another word of the year. These are the most popular words that you have chosen and commented with. And I was looking at the list and I was quite inspired with the word magic. I have taped a piece of four and a half by six inches cold press watercolor paper. Uh, this is 140 pound weight to a kitchen cutting mat. That's very fancy too. And let me just re-wet this a bit. Um, I just reloaded my white wash because I'm going to need a bit of that. What I want to do is um, depict a cloudy sky, but a happy cloudy sky. And we're going to try and inject some magic into it. Ooh. This is shell pink. So I'm gonna start in the middle here and I'm gonna keep my color moving. So sometimes all that I'll have is just semi-clean water. Um, the water in my jar is not super clean because I've done other pieces before that. And it's okay. So I'm gonna keep on adding the color just as long as the the paper remains wet, I can very well move I can move the, the color around like so. And I'm going to slowly fade that. Actually I'm gonna mix what I have here. Um this is kind of like terracotta-ish a bit. Uh, this is transparent red oxide with a little bit of that shell pink. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more of that pink there. And I'm gonna bring a tiny bit of light indigo up top. up some of that color here and swoosh it here. Maybe I, should, I can add a tiny bit more of that shell pink right here. Intensify the color as we're getting closer to the ground and then adding more of that transparent red oxide into the mix. And then maybe even, uh, let's try a bit of deep scarlet, just to get that more of a reddish tone. Yes, that's what I was looking for. All right, so you see, as long as the rest of the paper stays wet, I can move the color around without creating too much uh, water lines. Now, I understand I have little uh, spots here of color that I have not, like I did not carry the color well to the tape. But at this point, if I try to repaint this, it's going to create a streak because this part here has already started drying a tiny bit. So I have to accept that. I have to leave that alone. Okay, so this is dry enough. I'm gonna switch to a round brush. I have here a number six round caviar by Dynasty. The previous brush that I used is a half inch flat silver black velvet. I will list all the supplies as usual in the description of this video as well as in a pinned comment. I am going to now use white wash to introduce the clouds. Now, my white gouache is fresh. I just refilled the pan. Normally, it would be dry, so I would have to wet it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit. I like to start off with kind of like a long um, brush stroke and then fluff it up. Now, my brush is fairly dry at this point. So 
So I'm gonna wash that and I'm going to pick up a little bit of indigo blue and use that indigo blue at the bottom of this cloud. Now, um, this is my interpretation of a cloud. So you can see that the white is now, because it's still wet, um, is, is showing really well at this stage. And then the blue is creating some sort of a shadow underneath. This is going to change because as it dries, the white might lose its intensity. And then we can go over that a little bit after that. But I'm going to create. So this is the, the small one. I want to have a big, large one here. So I'm going to start on this side now. I might add a bit of water. Now, obviously, the more water you add to white gouache, this is not acrylic gouache, by the way. This is designer gouache, which means that it's watercolor gouache. the bottom and walk that into the body of the cloud. Okay, I do want to darken this area here. Let's see if I bring in alizarin crimson. Make it a cooler color. Mm. Doesn't show a lot. Maybe magenta. I don't know. Let's keep trying. Um, this is an experiment. Oof. It's more like more pink than I wanted. Not sure I'm liking this. I'm gonna need to let that dry. Okay. I really like how this one turned out, so I'm not gonna touch that one. But this one could use also quite a bit of white. So what I'm gonna do is add white to the top part 
above that cloud. All right. And then rinse my brush. And then with my thirsty brush, I'm just going to touch the bottom of the white section. So I'm not touching the top part here and hopefully it'll stay put. Okay, so I told you that I wanted to add a magical element to this. Um, I have here um, a set by Paul Rubens. I, I can't remember what it's called. I've had this for a while and I don't think I've ever used it in a video, but this is the color Wine Red. These are all shimmery paints and I'm going to add that towards the bottom. So this needs to dry. Oh, I don't know if you can see. Oh, there it is. See, you see the reflection. Uh, I think it's called, I think they're called iridescent colors. Something like that. I'll try to put the link in the description. Okay, so I have my brush loaded with the gouache and I didn't add a lot of water to the mix. So this is, it's quite opaque at this point. Now, what I want to do is add wisps, wisps, <laughs> wispy, all right, this is tough, wispy filaments of clouds, does that make sense? You know when you, you take a, a cotton ball and you stretch it, and because before it breaks apart, you can see all the fibers and becomes like super thin, this is what I want to add. These are more like in the foreground, so they're going to be, you know, passing in front of these clouds. And I'm at this point, I'm dry brushing. So let's imagine we're we're in an airplane and, you know, we're going somewhere nice because there's no pandemic <laughs> and we can travel and, you know, we're traversing this beautiful scenery and, um, so the airplane is in those filaments and these are like far away. So this is what I imagine would happen. And if it skips, that's perfect. It's a perfect way also to add, um, to correct some of the mistakes you may have done. So at this point, I would say this painting is done. I love the colors of this painting so much. It makes me happy. Oh, we've got a, a little leakage there, but that's not a big problem. There we go. Ah, yay. So pretty. I have to thank my son-in-law who gave me the inspiration for this piece. He had a different idea in mind, but it was greatly inspired by what he said. I am so happy with how this turned out. I could have worked on the clouds a little bit more, but nature is not perfect. Uh, nothing is perfect in this world. I could have blended the colors a little bit more, but at some point you got to stop and then do another one and then practice some more. This is definitely something that I am going to practice more. I have seen skies like these with this, with these colors and it always fascinated me. So I'm glad I got to paint my own, my very own happy sky. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Thank you all so very much for watching. I want to say a huge thank you, of course, to my awesome patrons who support my art over at Patreon. I hope you will give this a try. And if you do, please let me know how it went. In the meantime, please stay safe, happy and creative. And I will see you soon.